Hello everybody, my name is Kern and I post home recording weekly. Today we are checking out three brand new professional level compressors from Positive Grid. Now Positive Grid has been known to use technology to make some very good top of the line virtual stuff. I'm talking guitar and amp sims. They're making pedal stuff now. And I'll tell you, this these three new compressors, let's take a look at these compressors. This is the Positive Grid website where they have just released these three to the public. You have the tube, the optical, and the FET compressor. Now the FET is solid state, and of course the other two are tube-based. Uh, and you can, as I'll show you, you can change all of these components up here and the mix levels and the slope of the knee and all kinds of good stuff. And I'm going to show you all of that here in just a minute. Now, Positive Grid, like I said, is a leader in this field. And at first, I thought this technology was amazing. And, you know, look out, I'm going to build the perfect compressor. And let me tell you, I started getting worried. Now, a lot of times, tracking up our music and, and releasing our own music is about efficiency. It's about uh, leaving as many choices as we can uh, for the other guy. We just want to eliminate too many choices, make up our mind and go, right? Make these choices and, uh, you know, forget. Because we can paralyze ourselves with all these choices that we have. And if we save them for the next phase, then we find ourselves never finishing anything. So I thought, this is bad news. Well, I'm happy to report the opposite is true. With changing all of the components that make up a compressor, uh, just by opening the three compressors, uh, you are able to find one that's going to work. And then you can tweak it easily to perfection. Now, I haven't worked in a, in a calibration lab. I don't know what all these components do or how this technology works, but I think they have a done an amazing job because I'm noticing when I change these components, not just the sound is changing, but the headroom involved, the way the compressor circuit works, all of this stuff is changing as I change these components. And at first it kind of threw me because I had to re recalibrate everything and reset everything when I changed tube sets or transformers. But it's very pleasing in sound when you do that. So anyway, the technology, it's incredible and it works. And what I'm learning is it doesn't paralyze the user. It helps the user to get a perfect compressor, the compressor of their dreams for that, for just that track they're working on. And then, of course, you can save all these custom compressors as presets when you're done. So you can have your, you know, compressor of your dreams for your bass tracks, for your snare tracks and things like that. So anyway, I've got a song here I'm tracking up. Uh, I've had this song as a demo for a long time, and I'm finally getting to tracking up some of my stuff. And this one is no different. This is a, I'll play it for you, and then we will check out the the brand new compressors on from Positive Grid on the snares, the bass, and even some acoustic guitars that I tracked up just for this review. Here we go. Let's check out uh, what I have without compression. Now, I haven't been using these compressors for a very long time, but I have been using them almost exclusively since they came out. So I have learned some things, but not everything. Okay, guys? And, you know, I believe in being honest and upfront. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, I'm going to solo my mic. I'm going to solo uh, the mics in question here, the snare. And let's check out what this does on snares. I'm going to put this in mono. Oh, that made a weird noise. I don't know if you heard that or not, but that's fine. Uh, anyway, we got snare tracks coming in. We have the snare top and the snare bottom coming in here. And as you can tell, I've got the three compressors. I've got the optical. Uh, I've got the tube and the FET. It's all right here. We're going to look at them one at a time. That's slow. I'm opening up for the first time today. 
So anyway, this is the FET, the field effect transistor. It's solid state. What I like about these compressors are not only the technology involved, but you can customize a lot of the features that most of us are used to. You know, you got the mix, um, detector circuits, look ahead circuit. You can customize the meter if you want to see how the in or the output or the gain reduction is doing. It's all here. Everything is as you would expect. Now, there's not much to customize on the solid state. Why? Because there's not much to customize on a solid state. I mean, it is what it is. As long as the values are what you want, that's the that's the deal. So. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, but I want you to know there is a look-ahead circuit uh, that you can remove the lows out of the detector circuit. If you don't know what that means, um, let me say now, these compressors probably aren't for the beginning recording and mixing and mastering engineer. These are for the people that have been doing this for a little while and have a pretty good understanding of what a compressor is doing. Now, the detector circuit, the look-ahead circuit... Uh, are, are kind of different. The detector circuit is what makes the compressor work. It's not what comes to your ears. It's not what comes out of the output. The detector circuit is uh, what tells the compressor to turn on and off. It's uh, a copy of the original, but let's say you're doing drums, you're compressing drums, and you're noticing that the thumping kick drum is making the compressor work too hard, then you can dial this uh, low cut back and remove the kick drum from the detector circuit. The look ahead is just that. It looks ahead to see what's coming up to try to figure out uh, how to make the compressor work. So this is the FET. Oh, and there's a knee width and a mix. Um, the, the mix knob allows you to run this thing in series all the way open at 10 or in some variation of parallel so you can use just a little bit or a lot. Uh, this thing is, is very flexible for an FET compressor. I like it. And, the, and your knee is the slope of the actual compression. Do you want it to be hard compression, you know, soft knee, whatever you want? It's here. You remember in the old days they had over easy and all these cool names for the knee? Well, that's what that is. So let's listen to it uh, and then I'll uh, bring it in out of bypass. Now, I have it set up just to even out all of the hits and to turn up the snare, uh, broadly turn it up. And you notice when I employ it, the ringing, the body of the snare gets louder and longer. So I've removed some of the attack uh, and I've made the body, the, the sustain a lot louder, right? And that can be good or bad. It depends on the song. But that's what I did. So I have a ratio setting of about, let's see here, uh, 2.5 to 1. Uh, let's just look. I have a pretty slow attack. I wanted the transient to come through before the snare grabbed it. Uh, and a pretty quick release because I want the release to be almost all the way back by the time the next snare hit happens. So one more time, I will do this for you and let you listen to what, you know, the compressor sounds like. And it's quite a difference. I'm very impressed with that. And I'm going to close it and I'm going to open up the optical. Now, an optical compressor is known for the, the speed at which it can work, right? It uses light uh, as the operating circuit. And there's not much stuff faster than light in the universe, right? So you can imagine these things are, if you have a, a very fast transient, then this is probably the compressor. And you're looking to tame that. Well, this is the compressor you're probably looking for. Now, notice the input stage tube, the capacitor, this capacitor, the light source, that can all be tweaked and changed. I mean, you have one, two, three kinds of tube sets, or it can be off. You have one, two, three capacitors there. You've got three capacitors there. And I, I assume it's the input and the output stage. And then you have your light source. I have this set up for the snare to be just as good as the FET, 
or to be accomplishing the same task as the FET. So all three compressors are on here, and I tried to do the same thing with all three. So we'll go through and see how well I did. Uh, basically, I got the same level of reduction, uh, the same kind of, of release, and the same tone that I was kind of going for. Uh, as you can see here, the slope is kind of over here on the easy. It should be over here on the hard. But other than that, I think I got them close. Now, not only did the tone change drastically when I went through the tubes. Uh, oh, and you can turn that circuit off, too, and that's pretty cool. It makes a huge difference. But also the tone, the headroom, the way this compressor worked. And it took me a long time to figure out what was going on here. And there's still so much more to, for me to conquer. Like I said, I haven't been using these a lot, but I have been using them exclusively. I will now shut off my mic. I, I know I talk way too much in these reviews, and I will see what we have here. I am so sorry. I had a glitch and I had to record the snare portion over again, but that's fine. This is the optical compressor. Again, they're known for having a very fast attack. Um, I have it set up in a pleasing manner that I liked right now, and I'm going to play it, and I'm going to uh, show you why I think it's pleasing, and then I'm going to just tweak it. Uh, taking all the components that make up this compressor and swapping them in and out and kind of introduce you to what's possible here. So let's listen to what this sounds like. I'm going to mute my mic. Instantly, we got that rock and roll uh, snare sound. And that happens when I take a track from stereo and put it in mono. I don't know why, but I get that sound. Anyway, the sound is splashy, that splashy snare. They say it's like paper or like hitting water. You get that splash. Listen again as I bring this in and out. I'll bypass it, and then here we go. The ringing is louder. But, you know, the ringing is louder, the body of the snare is louder. Some of the low end went away. Thank you, uh, tubes. That's what tubes do. Um, you know, a huge complaint of bass players and fuzz pedals and overdrives and distortions is the bass goes away. And it's clipping, it's tube clipping, saturation, call it what you want. That's, that's just what happens. Uh, and here is no different. Uh, some of the low end did go away, but... The harmonics that are added to the top end, even though it's still a digital plug-in, sound analog to me. It just sounds warmer. Um, the, the saturation that happens in that high end is very pleasing, and I like it. Uh, I like what it did. So let's play with the tubes and, and the light source now. Again, if it's a, a different kind of bulb, it's going to affect the attack different. Now, of course, light is the fastest thing in the universe, so this is a fast attack. But different bulbs like LEDs are either on or off, uh, you know, in a circuit it seems that. And then there's a panel and bulb and there's different tubes over here. And you can turn it off if you don't want that. Uh, the, the next compressor we're going to look at has an input and an output tube stage where this one just has an input. So let's play around and see what we can get. Now I did mention that things like headroom will change and the way circuitry works when I changed to LED you saw all of a sudden we got like four more dBs of attack or I'm sorry compression happening noise reduction gain reduction whatever uh, that's just because it's a different circuit altogether and it's acting different and in the, I mean that's incredible to me that I'm able to do that. And again, we're at full mix. This is 100% in line or in series, and I'm not messing with any of the other knobs. Let's keep going. Oh, and this can work as a limiter or a compressor, so that's cool.
So I went ahead and brought it back here because that's just about my favorite setting. It's not dialed in beautifully, but you get the idea. It just adds something so wonderful and magical to that attack, that initial transient that I just, I find it warm. I find it um, very subtle too, but compression is wonderful on a snare it makes it present and when you can saturate that top end make it sound like the the famous paper snare well it's even better well holy tubeness what do we have here we have an input tube stage and an output with 6l6s or el84s for the power stage and a transformer believe it or not that all makes a huge difference in this particular uh, compressor. I'm going to make sure it's set up and ready to go and then I will come back and we'll listen to it. All right, we are set up and ready to go. And again, you're going to notice some of the low end going away, but I think in a mix, you really wouldn't notice that, especially in a parallel track. Uh, just see what I mean? Let's go ahead and hit it. And now I'll bring it out of bypass. I'm sorry, I worked there to get the, the output gain to be pretty equal, uh, just so you can hear it. And let's do that again. Sorry, that is so uh, pleasing to me. I, I went to unmute my mic and talk to you, and I took the whole thing out of solo. But let's do that. Let's listen to this uh, bypassed, and we'll take it out of bypass and listen to the whole mix. So yeah, you are missing out on some of that low end going away, but man, in the mix, that just sounds awesome. It sounds amazing. I mean, I'm not missing that uh, low end at all. In fact, what's left behind is, is warmed up with the tubes so much that it sounds wonderful. Now, if we bring in this output tube stage, well, that's when things start to really break up for me, and it's not a great sound. In my example, uh, in, in my opinion, I mean on the snare. Now, on guitars, like electric guitars and vocals and things, this thing is going to rock, uh, but however, listen to the snare. You hear that breaking up a lot more? Maybe you like that. Nothing wrong with it. I just, uh, it's not great on snare, so I'm gonna leave it out. But let's look at what the other stuff does. For what it's worth, I've noticed that the uh, aluminum is a darker kind of sound. I, I don't know if that means anything to you guys or not, but I have noticed that. And I know you guys would never do something because I said so, but this is probably going to be one of my favorite settings for the snare. Uh, no output stage tubes on the 12 AX7 tubes and, you know, kind of go from there. I, again, I'm just trying to make every snare the same level. I'm trying to leave in some of that attack and I want the the body of the snare to be more pronounced. So lastly, I just, with this 
set up this way. I want to bring the mix back. I want to put in 6L6s again and then bring this mix knob to 50% so it's acting like a parallel track just for giggles. So there, with, with both input and output tubes on, uh, the thing doing its magic at 50%, about 50%, wow, it, it makes a, a good difference. It's a positive difference, and I really, really like it. Um, you guys using tube saturation on the drum kits, maybe this is a way around that. Maybe this is a, a great idea for you to get that that tube warmth, even though it's a digital plug-in, on just the snare instead of the whole kit or something. Uh, if you if you got to compress and then do tube emulation, why not do it all with one plug-in, right? I mean, that's, that's my five cents worth. I think these plug-ins are, are more than fantastic. Uh, they're very flexible, and I just love what I'm able to get quickly and then save as presets with these plug-ins. Okay, let's go ahead and listen to the bass in solo. It is my bass. Uh, I recorded it myself, and then I went ahead and whacked it with Audio Bend, and then I ran it through Melodyne, and then through a virtual instrument. So it is me playing the bass, but, I mean, come on. Now, when that sounded better all of a sudden, it was because of this FET compressor. Uh, again, as you can see, I have it set to all the way mix. Uh, it's got a halfway in between hard knee and soft knee. The look ahead is on and the detector is on full. Now, as I told you, this detector circuit works. It splits the signal in two and it uses one signal just for the compression circuit, not what you're hearing. So let's play with that real quick and I'll show you how that works. I'm going to remove low end so that the actual compressor doesn't see the low end of the bass. makes a big difference. You can see the gain reduction meter. When I put that low end back, it started working even harder. And that's great. That's what we want it to do. So my goal in mind, using the three professional compressors from Positive Grid on the bass, was to remove the dynamic attack um, because some notes I really popped easily and other notes I kind of squashed. They're quiet. I wanted to even them out and increase the sustain to have this thing almost sound um, like there's a lot of reverb on it, but still have the attack. So that's what I came up with. And again, it's all the way on. Uh, so I'm going to bypass that and we're going to get into some character. Uh, the optical compressor is, it's a beast. I mean, the attack speed is out of this world and it's so customizable. You can, if you let it, it'll cripple you. But if you use it with your ears, it's fast, it's easy, and it makes any track you put it on sound great. Let's check it out before and after. So there are features of each compressor that I wish they had, wish were there. And in the real world, they're probably not there anyway. You know, a master output on some of this would be cool. Instead of working the input gain and the peak reduction, and it is what it is. Now, I do have an input down here, and I have a mix knob, and it's all the way on. Now, if this, they removed some of the low end, but you can always bring it back, and I'll show you what that might sound like right now.
what I hear when I do that, it's very subtle at at fifty percent. So a parallel, right? It would be like having two tracks, one of them introducing half uh, the low as the other. But the point is, when I put it at half and then I turn it on, there's a more sustainy bass that reinforces the attack track bass. So it's like adding balls to the bass, and oftentimes I'll call it bass balls when I use a parallel compression. So at any rate. Um, this is great, and again, you can change everything. Now, I'm going to draw your attention to there's a bias knob, an attack, release one, release two, mix, and an input level. Of course, your knee. Uh, you can have this thing be a limiter or a compressor, which is very cool. I'm going to draw your attention to how much low end comes in and out when I start playing with this stuff. Even more on the next compressor, but definitely here on this one. I'll mute my mic and I'll just play some bass. So when I brought in the bulb, it was like all of a sudden it wasn't working. Uh, and I believe it's because all of a sudden it's using the bulb in the circuit and it's not as black or white. It's not as on or off. There's more of a variable there. So I had to bring the peak reduction up and quickly it, it started working. That's what I mean with the headroom and the different tubes. When you change the stuff around, all of a sudden you'll notice the gain reduction goes crazy. It goes way higher or lower. And that's because they've modeled how these things react in real life. It's, it's quite amazing. Okay, very subtle what happens on the low end there. But this is very good on bass. In fact, this is probably the compressor of the three that I like most on the bass. Now we are on the one that I was, you know, giving you some warning about. And it's not a bad thing. I mean, some people are going to like this on a parallel bass track. Some people are going to like what this does to a bass. Some people are not. If you're in a punk band, this is probably the compressor you're going to reach for. Okay, let's check it out. I know, you're thinking, where did my low end go, right? Well, that's how these work. Now, like I was telling you, if we left the original track alone and then we copied it and used this as a parallel bass track, uh, I will do that simply by rolling the mix back to 50%. You'll hear what I was talking about. It just sounds like you're taking only the top end and making it fatter. Now, I just would like to show you how that cuts through in a whole mix, okay? Let's do that now. <laughs> I'll mute my mic and then I'll play this in a mix and hopefully it'll work.
I'm not really sure it did what I wanted there in that instance. I mean, I changed everything around. What I did notice is some of the low end did go away, even at 50%, but it seemed more of a solid track. Like there were, the dynamics went down and it got, it filled up that space more. There were, there were, you know, the quiet parts went away. The, the sustain raised dramatically. And most of the times, and even I'm finding when I'm doing live gigs, most of the battle for me is not making someone attract sound right. I mean, that's extremely important. I do that first. But it's making that vocal or that bass um, not jump through the mix and stand out each time he touches it, but to make it there all the time, if your mind wanders, like if he's, if the bass player comes to the front of the stage, all of a sudden, because you see it, you notice the bass and it sounds fantastic. But when the lead guitar takes the spotlight, I want you to hear the lead guitar just as well. And, and that's the whole idea to me, um, as I learn more about mixing, is learning when to use compression and when to not use compression or how to use it, I guess, more, more to the point. And... To be honest with you guys, what I'm really learning is it's about making a track sound good with EQ and compression. And then it's about using compression to make a track uh, always there when you want it and not not to cut through and, and, and be peaky. Um, you know, there's a lot of things we use it for. So now we have uh, two acoustic guitars coming through and I'm going to need just a minute to set this part up. Now you should know I tracked these acoustic guitars up just for this video. So they're full of accidents and stuff like that. And the timing is off and I could go down a whole list of excuses. But that's the truth. I made these acoustic tracks just for this video to show you what these compressors sound like on acoustic guitars. And that's because I think it's important and because that's a test I wanted to do. So I've got these set up, albeit it was quick. And I have them set up anyway to do the same thing. I wanted to remove the transient. I wanted to smooth out my acoustic guitar attack and bring the sustain up and yet not lose any tonal qualities uh, per se and try to make it sound good. Again, at full mix, using just the settings we have, I'm not using any parallel compression tricks or anything like that. So let's listen to this a guitar track. And then let's bring in this FET compressor. I will tell you that the first thing I noticed was the guitar seemed, the, the two guitars seemed to be closer to me, like more in my face when I turn this on. Let's check it out. You can definitely hear more of the room, the basement I was standing in. But that's cool. That's what a compressor does. It brings instruments closer to the front, right? So I noticed I took a little bit out of the detector circuit because the low end of my guitar. Again, none of these tracks have been mixed, guys. These are all raw tracks out of my microphone or out of the, you know, I plugged my guitar into my interface and this is what we got. Now, I did use a Heil microphone to record these acoustic guitars, so there's some low end here. I took it out of the detector circuit because it was making the compressor work really hard. I didn't want it to work that hard. Again, the knee is in the middle and this is what I came up with. I like the way this sounds. I mean, FET compressors to me, always sound good, like 1176s. I believe they're, they're a solid state. I could be wrong, but they sound good on acoustic guitars. So uh, did I say 1176s? Yeah. Them, and I also like um, 
LA 2A style. And that's kind of what this reminds me of. It's like a combination of the two. More LA 2A. But, I mean, when I do acoustic guitars, that's what I reach for. So, again, I could be wrong about the 1176 not having tubes in it or whatever. But, you know, so be it. So, let's bypass this. Let's turn this off and let me bring in the next compressor. Okay. What I noticed with this compressor... And, and the way the LED or the uh, light circuit works is that the attack is fast, but it kind of sounds pumping. And it's very difficult for me in solo. Now, once I bring it out of solo, it sounds great. I think uh, the guitars remind me of like a Boston album. So maybe this had some, you know, a compressor like this had something to do with it. I don't know the way they produce the song too. Who knows? Let's, uh, let's, let's check out. Excuse me, I had to cough there. I'm not feeling so well. Let's see what this does. I will bypass it and we'll bring it in. Now, like the other times, I'm trying to remove some of the transients uh, and just make the, the guitar seem like it's almost like a piano or an organ. No sharp transients poking through and making sound the whole time. Very sustainy. In fact, maybe you heard that. When I bring it out of bypass, please listen in bypass. Listen for the attack, the pick hitting the string of the guitar. And then when I turn this on, hopefully you'll notice that goes away. Okay, I don't want this to be a lesson on compression, and I'm sorry about that. I just wanted to let you guys know how I'm setting this up, and now I'm going to let you know how it changes radically. Now, tubes are good uh, on electric guitars and snares and things like that. I was curious what's going to happen on acoustic guitars, so let's just, I'm going to put it in solo, I'm going to change the stuff around, and you, you, you think what you think. I'm going to mute my mic and just go for it. You saw how touchy these light settings were. I mean, from bulb source to bulb source, this uh, gain reduction was going crazy. And that's because that's the way that the, they work on the intensity of that light. Um, that's seeing the signal is how much the compressor is going to engage. And it's very, very touchy and very cool. I mean, that's probably how they work in real life. I don't have an FET or an optical, I'm sorry, I don't have an optical compressor for you to change the light sources around to demonstrate how it works. But man, I'm going to take their word for it because they know what they're doing. Positive Grid has been doing virtual stuff for a very long time. And this is just amazing to me. Moving right along, the tube compressor. And this one puts a smile on my face. I mean, it removes a lot of the low end of a signal. That's true. I won't say removes. I'll say it changes it 
transforms the top end, um, but it does suck up low end, no doubt about it, depending on how you have it set up. But this is the compressor that puts a smile on my face. There's something magical happening in the top end with the harmonics and the saturation that just, it warms up dull tracks, warms up digital tracks, even though it's a digital compressor, I know, but it makes things sound so wonderful. So let's see what it does to these guitars. It made them the low end almost eradicated the low end and it made it seem like thinning of the guitars like it they went away but i'll bet in a track that sounds good and you know i can bring this mix knob back if you want some of that awful muddiness to come back in but let's listen to what you know that's stuff i'm probably going to remove when i mix the song anyway but just for grins let's go ahead and listen to it in the mix and see what we get okay Okay, as promised, I set it up. I took the electric guitars out, and uh, let's take this out of bypass and see what we get. What I heard was, of course, the top end is more, X, you know, you can hear it better, the top end more accented or something. And the low end seems to go away, but when I brought the mix to 50%, it was like perfect. I mean, like mixed, mastered, perfect. So, yeah, a lot happened, but a lot of good stuff happened, right? I mean, it sounded very good to me. And now I would like to just play with all of these things uh, while the acoustic guitar is playing solo and then you guys can like it or not like it. And, uh, you know, my job is just to show you what happens. Now, the makeup knob has been broken off on this. There's an output gain, so please don't worry. They're trying to make it look like it's been used in a studio. And I'll give them credit. A lot of this stuff looks really cool, really neat, and I want to dig in. But um, And I haven't gone through any of the presets with you guys so just know there are all kinds of presets um, but let's not go there let's just tweak what we have and we'll call it a day And remember earlier I said this output stage, you know, the tube, if you drive it hard like I am, uh, you get a lot of distortion out of there. So for the acoustics, I, you know, just to be, the FET was great. The optical, I think, was better. The tube brings a lot of warmth and, and saturation. So I did have that off. Uh, but now it's on and, you know, like it or hate it, I'm just going through what a lot of these things sound like for you guys. I think that is very pleasing right there. I turned the input and the output tube stages off 
and just have it going through the capacitors and the transformer. And that's an old trick studio engineers know. A lot of times they just run a signal through gear, like a delay unit or something that has a wonderful preamp and transformer. And it sounds like this. In fact, there's a uh, guitar pedal that is just the 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 transformer preamp circuit out of an old uh, what is it a Roland Echo or something, um, you know Pink Floyd fame probably or something. But that's what they're doing is just using their you know the coupled transformer or the the preamp and the transformer of that and leaving everything else out. So that's kind of what we're doing here. We're not using the the tubes. Um, to break it up and to add that warmth and saturation. We're kind of keeping it all solid state here. Check it out. Well, that should uh, conclude today's experiment, guys. These are the brand new professional compressors from Positive Grid. Um, again, these guys are leaders in the field. You know, if it's virtual, one thing you can count on is Positive Grid does it better. I mean, the guitar amps, the 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 bias effects that I reviewed recently. That's my go-to guitar sound now. I just love the different amps and pedals and the way they have it set up. Like you can make it into a pedal board if that's the way you're used to working, and it's just fantastic. Um, my website is Home Recording Weekly. I also have a podcast. I give away free eBooks over there. How do you use microphones, make your own acoustic room treatment. And if you're looking for audio training, you can use any of the links in my reviews. It's the same price, but I also make sure that you get the home studio ebook bundle. It's a bun it's actually three different video products that I give away. Yours absolutely free. My way of saying thank you for using my links. Again, this has been a review demo of the brand new professional compressors from Positive Grid. Uh, thanks for your time.